So, day four of Warhammer 40k spoiler season keeps going on, and my goodness, we've gotten some really exciting cards. Mortarian Demon Primarch is definitely one of them. So learn why I'm talking about losing to win with this one. But don't leave just yet, because an absolute bombshell just got dropped. This is a broken commander. And of course, before we jump into the episode though, make sure you blame Eddie in the comments below for all broken commanders ever made. And if I make any mistakes on this episode, it's definitely Eddie's fault, even though Eddie just does a great job helping and, you know, recommending cards. Yeah, blame Eddie in the comments below. Now let's jump into it. So here we go. Trazin the Infinite. What a fitting name, as you'll see here in a second. A 4-6 Necron with Death Touch that costs 4 black black. It has Prismatic Gallery. As long as Traz in the Infinite is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all artifact cards in your graveyard. Ridiculous. I mean, this is basically Necronic Ooze in the Command Zone. Okay, I mean, slightly different, all right? Necronic Ooze is a very powerful combo card, and, and that one, okay, gives you access to all activated abilities of all creature cards in all graveyards, so it counts your opponent's graveyards as well. But um, I would much rather have the activated abilities of artifacts, I, I think. <laughs> At least when it comes to trying to combo off in ridiculous ways. And by ridiculous, I mean there's an absurd amount of ways that you can combo with this. Uh, I mean, there are just so many cards that work together in this deck, or should I say a deck that's going to be built around this, that can combo together, that if you are playing against this commander, at no point can you ever, 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 ever look away from the Traz and the Infinite player, because if you do, if you stop paying attention to what they are doing, you are done. Setting up a combo in a mono black deck like this is incredibly simple and easy. And again, there's such a wide variety of combos that you can do that it's going to be very difficult to stop. Now, of course, there are ways to stop it, but if you're playing against this commander, you need to be vigilant to do so. So you better hold up your graveyard removal because yeah, this one's gonna be a doozy. And even though this commander is six mana, some of the cards that this commander, actually I should say many of the cards that this commander would like to combo with actually are just fantastic ramp cards. So yeah, I mean, you're not even wasting spots in your deck. I mean, you're never really wasting spots in your deck with ramp, you know, but those ramp cards are also combo pieces too. So by ramping, you're not only getting to cast your commander quicker, but also again, probably setting yourself up to combo as well. Now, obviously, I won't be able to cover every single way that you can combo with this commander, but on this episode, I'm going to be covering quite a few of them because, again, there are just so many different combinations of different cards that this just happens to go infinite with because when it has those activated abilities of the artifacts in your graveyard, there are some crazy things it can do. And keep in mind, it does specify activated abilities, not just, you know, abilities in general. So, you know, if a creature, artifact creature in your graveyard has haste, this does not have haste. It needs to be an activated ability, okay? So keep that in mind. Regardless, if you are looking for an incredibly powerful commander, um, yeah, this is uh, definitely one of those from this set. So if you're excited about this commander and want to build around it, well, make sure you check out the card list link in the description below. I talk about, you know, all the cards on that list. And yeah, if you are interested in those cards, make sure you pick up some of them sooner rather than later because... When a broken, uh, incredibly powerful, uh, just absurd commander like this one, I'm losing my words right now, is spoiled. Sometimes cards that work well, they tend to go up in price sooner rather than later. So yeah, make sure you check out that list and maybe pick some up. And of course, with all that said though, let's jump into the cards. First up, setting yourself up for your combo is incredibly easy. I mean, in mono black, you've got access to a lot of great tutors, including some tutors that put things directly into your graveyard, like, you know, Entomb, a single black mana, instant, search your library for a card, put it in your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So very cheaply at in speed, you can just go get whatever you need to get, get it right in your graveyard, and that just might be, the, you know, the last combo piece that you need to just win. A more budget-friendly version of Entomb, though, is Unmarked Grave, a sorcerer for one in a black that does the exact same thing, but that card's not going to be a legendary card. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know if actually any of the combos that I'm bringing up in this uh, episode actually even include a legendary card. So, uh, yeah, there are plenty of combos that do not necessitate a legendary artifact creature with this commander. So, yeah, basically the exact same thing, but for two mana sorcery speed. And speaking of a sorcery speed way to get things into our graveyard, uh, Buried Alive is essentially just, uh, hey, go get the exact cards that you need and just win right now. That literally is what this does for this commander. Search the library for the three creature cards for the mini raver, then shelf your library. Again, it does specify creature cards, but yeah, there are plenty of different creature card combos that you can utilize to win with this commander. And here's one of them. How about uh, Palladium Mirror, Pilly Pala, and Walking Ballista? You go get those three creatures, put them into your graveyard, and, okay, I will say, your commander does, you know, it can't have summoning sickness, or it has to have haste, okay? Let's just say that. So either have, you know, a Lightning Greaves on your commander, or your commander has already been in play. These three in your graveyard, you win. Because Platymir has tap for Colorless Colorless, so now your commander has tap for Colorless Colorless. Great. Now your commander is a Mana Dork. And then Pilly Pala gives your commander pay to untap this creature, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So with your commander having each of these abilities, again, being able to tap for two and being able to pay two to untap and add one mana of any color, you can infinitely generate mana of any colors. Because again, you just tap for two, use that two to untap it, add well, a blue, whatever you want, okay? Add a black, whatever you want. Just keep doing this again and again and again, infinite mana of all colors. And of course, there are plenty of ways to win from there. I mean, one of those, again, is literally if Walking Ballista is in your graveyard, here you go, infinite mana outlet for you to win with. Pay four, put a plus one counter on Walking Ballista, which actually just means you'll put a counter on this creature. So yeah, your commander can get infinite numbers of counters, infinitely large. And then again, Walking Ballista also has remove a plus one counter from Walking Ballista, which again just means, you know, this creature. So your commander in that instance, it deals one damage to any target. So your commander gets an infinite number of counters on it, or okay, you know what I mean, a trillion. Uh, technically, you know, you have to pick a number, right? Whatever. Still, you get a trillion counters on your commander. You take all those off, and then you ping down all your opponents and all their things and they are very 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 well gone so yeah i mean again that's just one way that you can win and one way to generate infinite mana and again like i mentioned there are a ton of ways to do this Or how about an even simpler way to combo off where we actually don't even need haste or, you know, not having summoning sickness, and we just need two artifact creatures in our graveyard to pull this off. First up, Phyrexian Devourer is a very old card all the way back from Alliances back in 96. My goodness, yeah, here we go. Circle text reads, when its power is seven or greater, sacrifice it. Now, that doesn't apply to our commander because that is an activated ability. Our commander is not gaining that, which is very important because the next part is... Exile the top card of your library, put X plus one counters on Phyrexian Devourer, where X is the exile card's mana value. So essentially with this, we can just keep activating this as many times as we want, you know, exiling our entire library, getting every single card, you know, in exile and getting a number of counters on it equal to the total mana value of basically what's ever left in our library. Which should probably be enough to take out all of our opponents with Triskelion's ability. Which essentially is just like Walking Ballista as well, remove a counter from it, it deals one damage to our creature or player. So again, this one can be even harder to stop, and as long as we've got enough mana value in our deck to take out our opponents, they are going to be taken out quite effectively with this combo. But of course, we have an absurd amount of other combo pieces. I mean, just to name a few. How about Staff of Dominion, Voltaic Construct, and Retrofit or Foundry? These are fantastic ways to untap our commander, because again, when they're in our graveyard, our commander gets all their activated abilities, and my goodness, they have a ton of those. Staff of Domination has pay one, untap Staff of Domination, pay two, tap you, gain one life, pay three, tap, untap our creature, pay four, tap, tap to our creature, pay five, tap, draw a card. So with this one, our commander again has all those abilities, and again, just by paying a single mana, we untap our commander. So, um, yeah, uh, there are plenty of mana rocks out there that we'll talk about here in a bit that can go infinite with this. And again, once we have infinite mana, we can then utilize, you know, all the other abilities on this as many times as we want, gain infinite life, untap any number of target creatures, tap any number of target creatures, draw our entire deck if we really want to, probably cast our entire deck. We can win from there in many ways. Next up, Voltaic Construct, another artifact creature that's fantastic in this deck. Pay to untap target artifact creature. Um, here's the thing. So our commander uh, gets this ability, and also our commander is an artifact creature. So yeah, we can just pay two to untap our commander with its own ability then. 
Or how about Retrofitter Foundry, pay three, untap it. So yeah, I mean, this does cost you know a little bit more mana. It is gonna take, you know, a bigger, you know, mana rock or mana source for our commander to utilize to actually get infinite mana with this, but it definitely is possible. Regardless, if we do that, we can then make infinite servos, we can make infinite thopters, and we can, you know, make infinite, uh, you know, uh, colors constructs as well. We can just make infinite creatures, but yeah, I mean, if we've got infinite mana and, you know, other things to do, we probably have other ways to win as well outside of just making a massive army. But that's always fun as well. And again, when it comes to mana rocks, we've got a lot that can fit the bill for some of these. I mean, again, Soul Ring, that goes infinite with Staff of Domination just on its own. Because, I mean, okay, on its own with our commander, both of them in the graveyard, you know what I mean. But yeah, tap for two, so yeah, we can untap it an infinite number of times with Staff of Domination. And again, Soul Ring and these kinds of mana rocks are just great in this deck already because we want to ramp very quickly to be able to get our commander out quickly and be able to combo quickly as well. And speaking of a mana rock that is, well, a combo in itself sometimes, Basalt Monolith, this card is incredible. Does it untap your untap step, tap for three, pay three, untap Basalt Monolith. This just on its own goes infinite with another card I'm going to bring up here in a bit. But yeah, I mean, if we've got any way to have our commander tap for more than three, and again, Basalt Monolith is in our graveyard, our commander can just untap itself infinitely while generating infinite mana. I mean, even let's just say a card like, you know, Hearthstone, which, you know, reduces the cost of activities of our creatures, or I guess all creatures, whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, that plus this equals infinite mana for our commander. And of course, you know, a massive mana rock like Chromatic Ori can essentially go infinite with any of these untap effects. You may spend mana's lower any of any color, tap for five colorless, pay five tap, draw a card for each color among permanents you control. So again, in combination with any way to untap our commander, this just goes infinite. And of course, then we can, you know, infinitely untap our commander. So we can also just infinitely draw, you know, infinite, you know, draw our entire deck if we want to though. So yeah, again, mana rocks, definitely great in this deck, especially ones that are hyper efficient. And speaking of a hyper efficient mana rock, I mean, yeah, this is the kind of deck that can combo off incredibly quickly because again, the combo pieces themselves just help with our commander like a mana vault. It's an artifact for one that taps for three. So again, basically a better soul ring. Now this one does not untap during your tap step, but well, let's just say that that's completely fine with us. After it's done its job, we can find a way to, you know, maybe just get it into our graveyard so then our commander can actually tap for three as well. So yeah, other fast mana like, you know, Dark Ritual can be great in this deck. Pay a black instant speed, black, black, black to your mana pool. Um, yeah, just, you know, get your commander out as quick as you can. Probably get it haste or, you know, another way to combo, like, you know, those ways that don't require haste and just win from there. And then Eddie actually pointed out, yeah, Lion's Eye Diamond, an incredibly expensive card, but an incredibly good card with this commander. Sacrifice it, discard your hand, add three mana, pay one color to mana pool. Again, discarding your hand is typically, you, you know, a downside, but with this deck, it doesn't have to be, because again, if we've got artifacts in our hand that we want in our graveyard, um, Lion's Eye Diamond just can get us there. And speaking of getting artifacts in our graveyard, of course, there are plenty of other great ways to do that. I mean, Croc Play and Ironworks, a great one. Sacrifice an artifact, add two to your mana pool, so add colorless, colorless. And this, again, if we just get this into our graveyard, which this can actually get itself into our graveyard, our commander then has that ability as well. Our commander literally can just sacrifice artifacts to generate mana, which of course can go infinite in a lot of other ways too. So yeah, the potential of combo with this commander is just absurd. And yeah, there are plenty of other ways to get, you know, artifacts in our graveyard. I mean, reprocess can be a great one. Sacrifice any number of artifacts, creatures, and or lands. Draw a card for each permanent sacrifice this way. So again, we can utilize those mana rocks to ramp incredibly quickly. And then, well, you know what? When we just want, you know, some of them to actually be in our graveyard for our commander. Cool. We just sacrifice them and there you go. And, and of course, I mean, you also get to just draw a bunch of cards as well. So this can be great. And yeah, there are definitely going to be times when you're like, you know what? I don't really need all these lands that I have anyway. So let's just draw further and see if I get the last combo piece I need to. Now, some other cards that are incredible in this deck are, of course, cards that mill us, like Perpetual Timepiece, Codex Shredder, and Mismeric Orb. Again, by milling ourselves, we can hit, you know, combo pieces or, you know, just cards that can really help our commander by being in our graveyard. And yeah, again, eventually at a certain point, 
if our commander can untap infinitely, we can utilize them to just mill ourselves or mill other players like, you know, perpetual timepiece tap mill too. So by milling ourselves an infinite number of times, or, you know, uh, for our entire library, you know what I mean? We get every single card in our graveyard, which means our commander has every single one of our, you know, cards abilities that it needs to win. So of course, then we can combo off in a wide variety of ways to just take out all of our opponents. I mean, in a simpler way, there's Codex Shredder, tap target player mills a card. So again, with this, we can target ourselves to mill ourselves for as much as we need to. But again, if we can infinitely untap our commander again and again and again, well, we can just utilize Codex Shredder to mill all of our opponents out. Next up, Mesmeric Orb, though, is really, really good in this deck. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, the permanent's controller mills a card. So this can just mill us very quickly on its own. And on top of that, even if our commander can't generate infinite mana, again, let's say that we have, well, some kind of an artifact in play that maybe, let's say, taps for three and has pay three, untap it. You know, like, oh, what is that one again? Oh, Basalt Monolith. Yeah. <laughs> Basalt Monolith goes infinite with this on its own because Basalt Monolith can just, you know, tap for three, pay three, untap Basalt Monolith over and over again. So we can just mill our entire library into our graveyard and our commander can get every single ability of every single artifact we need to win. And of course, the same is true if Basalt Monolith is in our graveyard and our commander then obviously has the abilities of Basalt Monolith, so it can do both those things and yeah, infinitely mill to get to the things that we need to win. And if you don't want to mill your opponents to win, well, you can also just, you know, ping them down with cards like Scepter of Empires or Staff of Nin. Scepter of Empires has tap deals one damage target player, and again, when you can infinitely untap your commander, that's an infinite amount of damage to all players. Well, all opponents. Is, you're not, don't ping yourself. <laughs> Anyways, Staff of Nin says if you can keep draw a card down top of that, tap it deals one damage to any target. So again, ping down everything you want to ping down, most likely, you know, your opponent's faces. And of course, like I've said so many times on this episode, my goodness, there are a ton of ways for you to win with this commander. There are a ton of ways to combo with this commander. This commander is broken and ridiculous. And yeah, like I mentioned before, some of those combos might require you to be able to use your commander's ability right away. And again, your commander is going to be probably, you know, a pretty big target. So yeah, maybe get Lightning Greaves on your commander as quickly as you can. It has Haste and Shroud. So yeah, I mean, your commander can just be activated right away with any abilities that you need. And of course, it can't be targeted by your opponents or you, which is fine because yeah, you don't need to target it at that point. Or at least I should say for a lot of your combos. Uh, Swift of Boots is definitely going to be better for some. That being said, Golem Artisan might be better for some as well, because when this is in your graveyard, your commander has, well, pay two target artifact creature gets plus plus one until on turn, which sure, that's nice. But also, pay two target artifact creature gains your choice of flying, trample, or haste until end of turn. So essentially, yeah, I mean, just if you have an extra two mana, you can give your commander haste. And then with all those, you know, combos that generate infinite mana that want your commander to be able to tap right away, there you go. Your commander can do so. So basically, you know, just make sure you have eight mana available cast your commander and then activate your commander's ability, which is this one, you know, while this is in your graveyard to give itself haste and then have fun. Also, of course, there are other abilities that you can utilize to protect your commander, like Amaranth Wall. If this is in your graveyard, your commander has, pay two, your commander gains indestructible until end of turn. So again, keep these, you know, activate abilities that give your commander, you know, haste indestructible or those kinds of things in mind. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Trazin the Infinite. Yeah, this name might be the most fitting one that we've seen so far because my goodness, there are an absurd amount of ways to go infinite with this commander. And again, if I ever see this commander on the other side of the table, I am going to be incredibly wary of that player no matter what they say about their deck. Because as I've shown, I mean, a very, very, very simple card can just fill your graveyard. Again, if you just have that player cast a Buried Alive, they can go get the exact three creatures or even two creatures that they just need to combo off and win right then and there. So this commander is absurdly broken, absurdly powerful, just absurd overall. But if you really are excited about this absurd commander, make sure you check out that link in the description with the list of the cards I talked about in this episode, because again, when incredibly powerful and incredibly exciting commanders like this one get spoiled, well, sometimes the price that work well, the commander, especially, you know, combo pieces, uh, they can definitely go up in price. But yeah, cards might go up sooner rather than later, so make sure you check that list out. And yeah, make sure that you stay tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming up. And with that, this show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thank you again and have a good one.
This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.